Well, we're here at the range and it's Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone Express. And hello to all you shooters and reloaders out there, but see everything's all busy here and it's all jammed up. There's social distancing, therefore they can't have as many shooters. So it's a two hour wait before we can get a station to shoot at. So we're just gonna go ahead and kill two hours here. Be with you right away. Well, hello to all you three circles passengers and members out there and all you shooters and reloaders. A big hello to you from the Hot Lead Zone Express. And today I was gonna go to the range and shoot the 3030 inserts in my nice Beretta super light and these two are shorter barrels than my 4570 plus they're a little narrower because it's a 30 caliber and not a 45 caliber and it uses a little thicker o-rings because again the barrel is a little bit narrower so we can actually have two of these and have a 3030 double rifle and who knows if it shoots real well, I might want to get some 4570 shorter barrels to make this a double 4570 rifle. At any rate, my super light. You put the barrels in like this. And I like the lettering at 9 o'clock so I can make adjustments in the point of impact. Now these inserts are made by Chazel out of Georgia and they're very well finished. They look very nicely made and they fit perfectly and the gun closes up just fine. Now I'm pointing in a safe direction but there's no ammunition in those inserts. Anyway, I was going to go to the range and shoot these so with those two barrels in there this isn't too heavy. And that's good. And the sight picture, I mean, it's a one bead sight, but we've already shown with the 4570 it can shoot pretty accurately. I wanted to see how the 3030 was going to do, but unfortunately, when I went to the range, instead of the normal two hour wait, today was a five hour wait. And I said, no way that I'm going to wait five hours. So unfortunately, if that, that took care of the range from today, but we got something else to do, a nice project. What you see here are a couple of nice robust 4570 reloading trays. And the top is a little bit wider than the bottom base, so it's easy to grab. And it's nicely finished. It's actually made from cutting board material that was purchased from Home Goods, and the brand name is Brigandi, made in Italy, these cutting boards. And they're inexpensive. This one board for cutting was $5, purchased in Oregon. And so I purchased a couple of them to make these reloading trays, and it's a hardwood, not softwood like pine, so you got some nice wood here, it's not plywood. Then I used some shelving material that's also hardwood that I got from my neighbor when he was doing his remodel. And so it's already shellacked and lacquered and, and it's already stained the base. And all I had to do was just saw off, the, saw off the boards to the right length. After I drilled the holes all the way through, it gives you a nice flat surface for the brass to sit on in there plus a nice depth about just about an inch deep maybe a little less but that'll hold the 4570 brass very well so I got a couple of these and they're all glued together and also screwed together for extra solidity so these should last a, quite a long time especially after I spray some polyurethane uh, on there maybe two or three coats of polyurethane to make these really durable but the project today 
is to spin off of this and make 12 gauge reloading block. And uh, you can buy 12 gauge reloading trays, just like you can buy 4570 blocks, but you get the satisfaction of making them yourself. So let me show you what I have here. So there you go, Brigandi. And I bought the bigger cutting board from Brigandi. And you see, nice birch, very well finished already. It's already got the double circular type of routing that's been done on the edges. So really it's uh, almost tailor-made for making a reloading tray. But I intend to use this scrap piece of 2x12 to make a base that'll sit right inside to make a nice base that I can grab onto. And then I've already spotted the 50 holes and they're gonna be drilled for 12 gauge all the way through and then glued onto the base. And I'll have a very robust reloading tray for 12 gauge. So let's go ahead and take this out and cut to the right dimensions for the base. We'll just make a nice free-form cut here, make sure our cords are out of the way. That looks good. Take a battery out so it won't run. My holster is an old cardboard box that holds a saw when I'm not using it in a nice, safe fashion. That's a nice cut by the Makita. Had to do a little shaving on it though because I just let that go out of square a little bit, but now I'm happy with it. So you see, once all the 50 holes are drilled for the shot shells to go through, then the base is what's gonna keep those nice and secure for us as we're reloading them. So there goes the base. It's gonna sit on there just like that, but about a quarter inch inside the, the little lip of the routered edge there. And we'll be gluing that and screwing that together. And that'll be what it looks like with the 50 holes on top. Little bit on the big side, but then again, 12 gauge is pretty big, right? Let's go ahead and drill the holes. I've got them all spotted right here. Okay, so here we are drilling the holes with our Ryobi 10 inch drill press. Now, uh, I've gotta be careful not to block the camera. The laser is actually pretty accurate. We'll just drill a hole right here first. So that's right on it. Okay, we got it going pretty good now. That looks good. We'll go ahead and do all 50 of them and then we'll come through from this side. So here's a view maybe that I can stay out of the way a little better.
heading real well right now. And there we go. Yeah, we really got it going now. These are forced nerve bits and we don't want to force them, just let them go. So the next step is to take a small drill and go through the centers of those Forster bits from the other side and drill pilot holes through from this side. Then we use the Forster to come through from this side and we'll have perfect holes. As you see here. Let the Forster find the pilot hole You see we're through. Okay there are all the holes drilled for our 12 gauge. So now we'll sand it, sand inside the holes, get them all nice and smooth, and then we'll show you the next step. Gotta admit the Ryobi did a real good job there. So Ryobi strikes again and this is not even counting the sawdust that's on the floor. Now I'll save some of this for my bullet casting but I don't need this much. Besides, sawdust is easy. Yes, our Craftsman vacuum did a good job cleaning up the mess, as you see. And the floor too. Now, of course, sanding is very important because no matter how tough you are, we don't want splinters. Now this side we don't have to sand because we want this to be clean for the glue and dry. So we'll use some finer sandpaper now to finish the job here. A little bit of orbital motion. Then we need to do a little orbital motion inside, like for instance, there was already a hole here and we enlarged it to make a 12 gauge hole, but that left some rough wood on the edge. So look at that. Fix it right up. I must say I really like the way this came out. Now I'll get a rag and wipe this down. Now we also sanded our base, but the cut that the Makita made, these are the two cuts that the Makita circular saw made and they're just already pretty smooth, so just a little minor sanding. And now we choose the nice side to go on the outside, and we go ahead and center that on there. And you see it covers up all the holes, and it's a quarter inch inside the little router finish line. We're ready to start gluing. So let's do that. 
Okay, we got the glue lines there. Now we go ahead and set our base on. Get it centered. Looks pretty good. We'll let that sit for a couple hours. So here's the 12 gauge loading block all done. And you see all the holes are nice and smooth. There's no splinters anywhere. This is uh, ready to go. Give you a close up. This wasn't hard to do. I'm not much of a woodworker, so if I can crank this out like this uh, with the tools I have, then you can sure do as well or better. sanded all these corners so they're not sharp but that's the edge that we, we cut with our circular saw and this thing weighs about five pounds so it is stable when we're doing our 12 gauge slugs we're gonna have a good platform to do that in and 50 rounds that's about right now of course we all aspire to be expert craftsmen like Nick Ross who created this work of beauty, a thing of art. 18 shell 12 gauge loading block with a very fine wood and very well executed loading block. You can bet I enjoy using this, but I'll also enjoy using the one I just made for myself, a 50 round block. So when I'm in the mood for a lot of ammo, I'm gonna use mine. But otherwise, for load development and testing, uh, this is a very fine block to use from Nick Ross. So good shooting to all of you out there. It's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. Bye for now.